Recently I released a video comparing the Lexata Tower Stove with the Lexata Scout Stove. And in the comments I received after that video was released, a few of the viewers suggested I may want to re-look at some of the variables I had included in the test. They felt it may make a difference in the performance. So I considered those requests and yeah, they may. So let's give it a try and see if it does make a difference. So what were those variables that people had commented on? Well, the comment that I received most often was the size of the pots that I was using on top of the two stoves. Now, I'm going to put a link to the original, I think you can see where I'm pointing, the original video, which was just a, a week or so ago. And the comment was is that the pot diameter that I used on the Luxata Scout stove was considerably larger than the one I used on top of the tower stove. And they're right. And the reason I had used those pots was not so much that I considered what the pot sizes were, but those are the pots I carry these stoves in. I had purchased these stoves and decided that I was going to carry them in the pots. So this one, the Scout Stove, goes in the MSR Seagull 775 milliliter stowaway pot. Fits in perfectly. So I decided to use that pot with this stove. And I carry the little Luxata Tower Stove in the Camel Will 1.2 liter kettle pot, whatever you want to call it. And it fits perfectly inside of that stove. But yes, there may have been a difference in performance because of the diameter of the stove. It's well known that the larger base diameter of the pot, I mean, the larger base diameter of the pot will receive more heat and therefore distribute it through the water quicker. So let's take care of that variable. I don't have identical pots, but I have two that are very close. And these are two kettles. And I have videos where I compare the two of these before, and I've used them in other tests. So I'll be using the classic GSI stainless steel kettleist and the Pathfinder kettle. The Pathfinder does have a little bit more internal volume, but the base diameters are almost identical. So close, in fact, that there, it's not worth considering that there may be a slight difference there. So this is what I'm going to conduct the test with today to try to even up that variable. Another variable that was mentioned was whether or not I should have used the crossbars that come with the Lixata. And I'll put those crossbars on now. But I'll keep from dropping them down inside. Where they get stuck. There we go. That's better. Right. I'll do it here so maybe it's a little easier to see. So the crossbars placed on top of the Luxata tower stove raise any pot used about, well, it's a little bit more than a, about a quarter of an inch. We'll say it's a quarter of an inch height difference off the top of the pot. And I understand where the comment comes from. The idea of the cross stands raising the pot off mean that there's more exhaust space around the base of the pot, whatever pot it is, allowing for more airflow at the top. But look at the look at the stove. Look at all those holes are just below the rim. In my opinion, and I think other people might agree, is I don't think that's going to make any kind of a sizable difference in terms of airflow. It will increase airflow some that may or may not be a positive. But for this test, we'll include them today because why not? It's uh, they're there for that a purpose. I'll use them for that purpose. Now, there was one other variable that no one had mentioned, but I realized myself that may have made a difference. And that is the amount of wood that was being used in the two stoves. So I packed the two stoves with equal sized pieces of wood, dried hardwood split out down to this size. This is the size of the height that's needed to inside of the scout stove that come just below the secondary ports. However, if you use the same size in the tower stove, there's a whole lot of room. They will just, you know, settle out just below the ports, but there's a whole lot of space that you could have used for a whole lot more fuel inside of the tower stove. So I thought, I'm going to max out the stoves. I'm going to put as much wood as I can reasonably fit inside of the stoves, use them to the capacity that they're designed for. Uh, that's the way I would use them if I was in the woods. So why wouldn't I do that in this test? So I ended up with two sizes of hardwood. The shorter size is what I'm going to be using for the scout. The taller side is what I'm going to be using for the tower stove. Turns out once I've got them fully packed, it's almost identical in weight. Right around 10 ounces of dried hardwood is what fits in each of these stoves. So while it may be different sizes, the, the, virt the amount is, is virtually the same. Okay, I'm going to uh, set these stoves up with the wood. I'll light them. I'll bring it back when the wood has engaged 
and we'll put the pots on and we'll just see if I can bring both of these kettles to a boil with the single load of wood, which I'm pretty sure I can now, and if there's a much of a time difference between the two. All right, you know, this, this is the nice part about using kiln dried hardwood is that it engages with flames so quickly. If you're using some dried or some wood from the woods, you know, little branches and things, if they're at all damp, they take a little bit longer to engage. But both of these stoves are now engaged well enough that I'm going to put the pots on. In truth, I'd likely, as soon as I knew that the flame was sustainable, I probably would have put the pots on. Why waste the, uh, the heat that's being generated? But uh, it's only been three or four minutes, so now I'm going to put the pots on. I'm looking at the two stoves. The scout stove is starting to gasify, but I can still see a lot of the wood engaged with flame, so it's not true gasification yet. Uh, I'm not going to see gasification with the tower stove, at least until it gets well down past the secondary jets. But uh, that's okay. That's the, we know that's not a true gasifying stove. Let's get these two pots on. Stop wasting precious fuel. I'll start the timer. Now, it is a little windy in my backyard, so I think I will put a windscreen around the two of these stoves. Give them the best option or the best chance for performance that they can have. The other thing I hadn't thought of until now is that I will time it to boil, but I'm going to let the timer keep going and see just how long the load of wood will last in each of these stoves. I know had last time I had said that the Scout stove seemed to keep its load of wood so much longer and produce such a good heat because of the more efficient gasifying design than, than the tower stove. First off, I don't want anybody to think that I prefer the scout stove over the tower stove and that the tower stove is not a good performer. Not at all. In fact, I like both stoves. Uh, I was just impressed again to have well the, the tower stove or the scout stove does gasify. The scout stove still has so many other attributes that make it a great little performer, uh, including the fact that it's so easy to feed while it's, uh, you know, burning with through that big open hole. All right, enough talk. Let me put the screen around and I'll bring you back when, because I'm quite sure both of these stoves will bring the two cups of cold water to a boil in a reasonable amount of time. All right, I gotta get my gloves on. I see steam coming out of these two kettles. Rolling boil. And rolling boil, both of them. At four minutes, 54 seconds. And we're just going to let that continue to go and see how long the wood goes. But, oh wait, what do you think of that? Both of them came to a boil. Both of them came at pretty much exactly the t same time, just under five minutes. Uh, yeah, I'm quite impressed. Let's take these kettles off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see how the two stoves are burning at this point. And then, of course, I'll come back when the, t the uh, load of wood is finished out. So here are the two stoves. We're uh, maybe three minutes after the water had come to a boil. So roughly, I'm saying 10 minutes into the full burn time of the wood. The Luxada Scout Stove over here performing beautifully just as it has in the past. I can see full gasification. Actually, I can see a little bit of the wood engaged, so pyrolysis is not 100%, but it's burning very efficiently, very cleanly. And if you look at the tower stove on this side, the wood is well engaged. There's a lot of heat and a lot of flame. The flame may seem a little higher, and it is a little higher, but you know, I don't see any smoke coming off of that, so I'm going to call that a nice efficient burn, even though there is virtually no true gasification taking place in it, at least at this point. So I guess now, you know, the performance of the two of them is pretty much on par. The only other performance factor is to see just how long a full load of wood will last, and that's what I'll do. Okay, folks, hopefully you can hear me over. My neighbor's dog just came out into the backyard, wants me to go play with him. But at, what have we got here, nine minutes? That's not correct. I must have hit the timer wrong. I'm somewhere around 18, 20 minutes for flame out in both stoves. So the Scout stove did last a little longer than the Tower stove did, but I have flame out in both stoves. Still lots of heat down there, as you can see. It would still likely bring water to a boil, and you can certainly grill over that. But uh, and I have to wait now for the coal stoves to cool off, and uh, then I'll close this video up. All right, well, those were some interesting results. Uh, 
kind of a redemption for the tower stove in a lot of ways. So let's just go over again very quickly what I did differently this time from last time. So first and foremost, I chose pots that had equal diameter bases for them so that the distribution of heat across the bottom of the two pots would be as close to the same as was reasonable to, to achieve. Uh, the next thing I did is I added the pot stands to the top of the tower stove there, as was suggested by a couple of viewers, that, that it may make a difference in terms of more exhaust area for, for the flame and the smoke to, to vent out around the base of the pot. Did it? I don't know. I, I, I think not. I don't think it made a significant difference. I, you know, I could redo that test to see if it makes a big difference, but to be honest, uh, I'm, I don't personally feel the need to do that. If you own one of these and you've done those tests and you've made them as equal as possible, let me know if it does make a difference. For me personally, those pot stands will exist with my kit for when I'm using a small diameter pot or cup like either a water bottle or a GSI 500 mil or 750 mil GSI that type of thing that's what I'll use those cross stands for otherwise I feel there's enough exhaust area at the top of the stove based on those holes the other thing I did which I think made a huge difference in the performance of this two stoves was to fill them to their capacity you've got all that room inside of the tower stove with the extra height that the pot stand gives you why not fill it with wood that's what it was designed for and I think it showed it made a huge difference now even so this the tower stove didn't burn did burn through its load of wood just a tiny bit quicker maybe a couple of minutes at the most but just a tiny bit quicker than did the Lixada uh, scout stove a couple of thoughts on that oh by the way for somehow you'll notice I I couldn't give you an accurate time I hit the stop button on my timer at just around 10 minutes I'm not sure how that happened, but I'm going to estimate that these things went at least 20 minutes with a full load of wood, which is what pretty close to what I've experienced in the past when using both of these stoves. So I think that's probably a good estimate. And those variables can change depending on the type of wood, how heavily loaded it was, how much wind there was, what the air temperature was. So I'm comfortable in saying that they both ran around 20 minutes with the load of wood they had. What was even better is how close they were in terms of time for burning that load of wood up. The, this one did burn a little faster than this one. But you know, here's a thought on why I think the scout stove may have lasted a little longer. And that is its mass. It is a much heavier stove. In fact, it was interesting. Well, we know it's more than twice the weight of the tower stove. But what was interesting is when uh, it flamed out and I waited for them to cool down, I could pick up and handle the Luxata tower stove a lot quicker than I could the scout stove. The mass of metal in this thing retained its heat much, much longer. If that's important to you, that's something to consider in deciding between the two stoves. But I think it is that mass and the design that also allowed the wood to burn just a little longer because it retained heat and didn't lose heat so much as it does with the tower stove. Again, I don't see that as a negative. That's just the way this was designed. It's the way it performs and I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with that. Okay, I think I have shown that both of these stoves work very well within their design performance. They perform ex a, you know, equally well in my opinion. The Scout stove does gasify better than the Tower stove, but you know what was interesting? There were periods of time when this wasn't gasifying either. It was, there was secondary combustion taking place, but the pyrolysis wasn't complete. In other words, some of the wood was engaged in the flame and it wasn't just charring and releasing the combustible gases. Not a big deal. Either way, they're both good performers. They're both good values. It's exactly what do you want from them. I will say that this one performs better with pellets. So if that's an important consideration, then you may want to look at the Scout style stove. This one can be modified to perform with pellets, but it will never equal the performance of the Scout stove with pellets. All right, that's enough. Let's put this to rest. And until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.